Welcome to Careers Unwrapped Masterclass, bite-sized episodes focused on skills to help you excel in your career. Masterclass will cover a new topic every episode where we'll speak to career experts who will share their tips, tricks, and raw actionable advice. As someone who has had a varied career from soldier to salesman, expedition leader to entrepreneur, he knows firsthand that your career doesn't always lead you where you expect it to. Here's your host, Mark Fawcett. Hello and welcome to our very first Careers and Rep Masterclass episode. So masterclasses are going to be much shorter episode. They're focused very much on topics specifically designed to help you excel and accelerate in your career. I'm your host, Mark Fawcett, and our first masterclass topic is public speaking. So I'm really excited to be joined by James Evans. James is director and also lead public speaking coach at Vensa Coaching. He's run workshops for companies like Microsoft and Deloitte. He's coached public figures and senior managers at Apple and Google and more. And he's going to share his expertise on how he helps clients become confident speakers. He's also hopefully going to bring out a lot of his knowledge, his experience, and give us some tips and tricks. So if any of you are going to be in a position of public speaking in any shape or form in the future, then hopefully this will give you greater confidence to do so. So James. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Mark. So let's get straight into it, James. What's been your career journey to date and how has that built the skills and expertise that are relevant to public speaking? It's a really great question, Mark, with a really odd answer. Um, I've had quite an eclectic career path. I graduated from university having studied philosophy, politics and economics. And to be honest, I didn't really know what to do with that, like a lot of students and graduates, I think. So I tried a whole number of different things. I did a little bit of work in journalism, a little bit of work in research. Uh, I even tried my hand at stand-up comedy at one point, but nothing quite stuck with me, Mark. And Someone said to me at one point, well, in all of these roles, you seem to do quite a lot of speaking and presenting, and you seem to quite enjoy it. I said, yeah, that's right. And they said, well, have you considered making a living out of that? And I I said, what do you mean? Sort of giving speeches? What would I speak on? They said, no, have you considered teaching, training, coaching other people in speaking and presenting? And to be honest, Mark, I didn't realize that was a job right? (laughs) But of course it is because this is a skill that is so essential in all of those careers, all of those sectors, so many careers, so many sectors. This is something that people have to do in job interviews, in meetings, in presentations to would-be clients and existing clients. And so there is a real demand for these skills. So I then went to work for an agency that was training and coaching people in these skills, built the training and coaching skills myself, and then a few years ago started off on my own, and and that's where we are now. I think that's so interesting about the public speaking piece that many people will not consider themselves to be public speakers, yet so often they're required to speak in public. They might be presenting an idea, they might be doing a sales pitch, They might be in law, they might be in science and having to tell people about their work. All of those things are public speaking. So let's sort of go down into the nitty gritty of this. If I've got a public speaking event or a presentation or a pitch coming up in a few months time, what perhaps are the key advice points and observations you would give to me? First of all, if that was the case, you might be feeling a little bit nervous a little bit anxious about what's coming up. And that is completely normal. That is something that I encounter an awful lot. So what I want to do is give you a few advice points around dealing with those nerves and speaking with a bit more confidence. Now, the thing people worry about so much with this stuff is making a mistake, going wrong, tripping over their words or forgetting something or even freezing up and needing to check their notes. 
So the first thing I would say is get comfortable with the idea that you might make a mistake and have a strategy for dealing with it. Let me tell you what I mean by that, Mark, because so many people, they go, I just try not to make any mistakes or I just won't think about it and hopefully I won't make any mistakes. No, over the course of your career, when you're speaking, when you're presenting, you will make mistakes. That doesn't matter. It's, it's how you then recover from them. And it's really easy. Okay. It's really straightforward once you know. And what I always say to clients is if you make a mistake, the audience notice that is obvious, you need to do just three things. One, you need to stop. Two, you need to smile. And three, you need to acknowledge the mistake. You just need to stop. You need to say, sorry, guys, tripped over my words there. Let me say that again. And immediately you've taken the tension out of the situation. And you've got them on your side as well, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Because they go, oh, you know, this person is human, just like me. I could have been in that situation. Instead of covering it up and trying to pretend it hasn't happened and flicking through your notes, they all know what's happening. So much better to just name it and laugh about it and take the pressure out of the situation. That's why I say smile, put the audience at ease, make them know that you're not bothered and, and they shouldn't be bothered either. So that's a really useful thing to have in mind ahead of a speaking engagement of the kind you're talking about, Mark. So I've got my head around making mistakes, getting comfortable with that and my strategy for dealing it. What else should I be thinking about? Yeah, so you should be thinking about your first minute. This is where you introduce yourself, you give the title of your presentation, you talk about what you're going to cover. People think this first minute isn't that important, and they often skip over it when they're rehearsing their presentation, which you should do, by the way, out loud. It's actually one of the most important parts of the presentation. It's where you're going to make that first impression. It's where you're going to set the pace and the tone of the rest of your presentation. And importantly, it's also where you're going to build up your confidence and the audience's confidence in you. So actually, if you're only going to rehearse one minute of your presentation, Mark, make it that first minute. Do it out loud. Get up in front of the mirror and say, good morning, everyone. My name is Mark Fawcett, and today I'm going to be talking to you about careers unwrapped. It might feel really unnecessary. It might feel really silly. But actually, when you get under the lights or in front of that big audience, you really want to have that first minute ready to go. You want to have that first minute down. Because once you're through that calmly and confidently, the rest of it will fall into place. Excellent. So that's my first minute. I'm supremely confident in that now. What else should I be thinking about? You want to be thinking about how you're going to interact with the audience. You want to get them involved very early on. If they've heard 10 other presentations that day, they might be dozing off by the time you get to yours. Even if they haven't, imagine they have. So you want to get them involved early on. Really straightforward way to do this is to start with a hands up if question. Let's say you're presenting on careers unwrapped, Mark. You might go in and say, hello, everyone. My name is Mark Fawcett. By show of hands, how many of you have ever thought about your future career? You'll see a sea of hands go up in front of you. And just like that, the audience that you're speaking to are a little bit more invested in what you have to say. You might then go out to individuals and you might say, John, tell me, what have you been thinking about your future career plans? Sarah, tell me a little bit more about what you might want to do in a few years from now. And then you're really making it a bit more conversational and a bit more engaging for the people in front of you. So plan to get them involved and get them talking early on. James, I think that's brilliant. And 
absolutely in the flavor of what we're trying to deliver here on the masterclass because I've been writing notes as you've been going through this and taking away that, first of all, nervous is normal and it's fine to be comfortable about, but your three key pieces there about not worrying about making mistakes and getting comfortable that you will and having your stop, smile and acknowledge strategy around that. Perfecting the first minute. And if that's all you're going to rehearse anything, rehearse that first minute. And then lastly, having interaction very early on and those sort of questions that you know will get a large hands up response. Those are three things I can already see people could put into practice straight away. So that's been incredibly helpful. It's been short. It's been absolutely items and pieces that people can take away and use. And before I just close this off, I think one final thing, Jim, what else could people perhaps read or watch or listen to that you think is really good examples of public speaking or advice? So in terms of what they can read, they can, of course, visit our own Ventsa Coaching blog. If you search for Ventsa Coaching on Google, you'll find our website. You can go to our blog. We've got loads of articles on how to write a speech for a birthday party or how to deal with those nerves and anxieties in a bit more detail. Loads of stuff on there. But also, I would recommend watching lots and lots and lots of TED Talks, not just because they're interesting and you'll learn a lot from them, but because these are some of the best speakers out there in their respective fields. So don't just watch them and go, this is interesting. Watch them and go, oh, what are they doing there? How are they using their voice? How are they using their body language, their gestures? And perhaps something from that might feel quite natural for me. Perhaps I could try that out and learn from watching the best in the business. So the Venter Coaching blog, TED Talks are great places to start. James, brilliant. Thank you very much. So much to digest in such a short time, but really useful. And if there's one thing with public speaking for anybody, it's a skill. Yes, some people are a little more comfortable with it or a little more natural than others, but everybody can develop that skill. So whether it's about to be your big career presentation or you're giving the speech at a birthday party, some really handy hints to take away and use there. James, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Mark. This podcast is sponsored by We Are Futures. To find out more about We Are Futures and how we can introduce your brand, business or organisation to the mass markets of tomorrow, visit www.wearefutures.com. Make sure to search for Careers Unwrapped in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts or anywhere else podcasts are found. Remember to click subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at We Are Futures, thanks for listening.